Hello, I'm Martin Logan and welcome to the Irish in the UK. And a big well done to Henry McGlade for his show for the last half hour. Now coming up tonight, we are at the Lowry Shopping Centre in Salford. We'll also be at the John Alcor Hall in Urmston for Wayne Devlin's Croon into Christmas show. And we'll be joining some of the Irish community from the Warrington Irish Club who made a huge effort in fundraising event for the Alder Hay Children's Hospital in Liverpool. So we hope you'll sit back and enjoy the show. Now Francis House in Disbury, Manchester does wonderful work for children with short life expectancy. And recently we went along to the Lowry Centre to find out how they were doing with their Christmas tree appeal. How did you first get involved with Francis House? Um, I worked at Matt Vitis and as one of the biggest employers in the area when Francis House was being built, Sister Aloysius came and asked if we'd help fundraise. We said we would. We went down to see the plans and we've been involved in it ever since. It's 27 years. Now tell me a bit about Francis House because of course a lot of people around Manchester know Francis House and the wonderful work you do but for our viewers at home tonight tell us what you do at Francis House. Francis House provides respite care for children who've been under 16 when they've been referred but we don't have an upper age limit so basically it's to give parents, children, siblings and carers the opportunity to have some respite care knowing that it's a home from home. And however mum treats their child, that's how we would treat them. It's not a hospital. We go with whatever the parents want to do. And it's all about making memories. So it's not a sad place, it's a very happy place. <coughs> People find that a bit strange when they think of a hospice, but it's, it's a place where children come to live until they die. They don't come to Francis House to die. And of course you care for the families, as you mentioned there as well, because a lot of the families can stay over if need be with their child. The, yes, it takes a little bit of trust building. If you're leaving your child, which is the most precious thing to you, if you're leaving it in the care of somebody else, then that's a very difficult thing to come to terms with. But once they've done it, they just, they're just able to relax, maybe go and get a pizza, maybe go to the cinema, sometimes even go on holiday knowing that their child's going to be cared for in the same way that they would care for them at home. Now, Alan, we're here today, of course, at the Lowry Centre. Uh, tell us about your special Christmas trees that you've got going on here and your appeal. Yeah, well, the, the main appeal is for Francis House, the children themselves. Um, the trees, the lights that Francis House buy, they buy the lights trees, and then we contact companies, uh, shops, nurseries, or Millis, anybody would like to do a tree, decorate a tree, and if possible, put a gift underneath if they want to, or if not, just leave it as it is. But that's what they do, they raise, you know, and we raised 32,320 last year in the five weeks that we're here. And today, and today's prices at the moment, the things are going very well, very well this year as well. So mainly what happens, people come in, look at the trees, uh, you've got gifts with the trees, and people make a bid for the tree. We, we, we make a start of bid off of £50, first bid, because that gets us our trees and lights back. And then, as I said, people themselves then put bids on. It could be 50 it could be 100 If you can see yourselves, there's some there at £750, you know, and there's some at £50, and then there's, I think there's three at the moment without bids at all. And of course, you've got some lovely trees here. Some, some fantastic trees here. Uh, we've got uh, one over the side of me here is um, uh, Marks and Spe uh, They've got vouchers for Marks and Spencers and Fortman Masons. We've got a, a Coronation Street where the stars have signed. Uh, Strictly Come Dancing, where some of the houses there, have, uh, some of the dancers have signed that as well. We've got the Manchester United tree with sign baubles and a shirt uh, and also there's, uh, they're all different trees, everyone's different. And they're really beautiful. They are beautiful, yes, they are really beautiful. As I say, it's the best we've had I think this year. 
How important is fundraising for Francis House? It's vital for Francis House. I mean, we are lucky. We get regular support. We get regular contributors. We get people who will sometimes give us like their cold weather payment. We've got children who will sell their toys at the end of the, the drive. But it's, it's vital. We get less than 12% funding and it costs 4.2 million a year to provide the services. So it's, it works out about £6,000 a day. If people would like to make a donation to Francis House, how can they do that? Well, they can, do, they can do it online, they can do it by post, they can call in and see us, they can support just dropping coppers into a collection box. They're, they're, they're in lots of shops and stores around the, around the place. We've got people who um, sponsor, you know, whether it's uh, a, spo a sponsored event, whether it's through children at school, whether it's whether it's coming in here, whether it's buying Christmas cards off the online shop, whether it's taking money to Francis House, whether it's helping with the chick appeal, there's always something to do. Now every single penny raised from the sale of those beautiful Christmas trees goes towards funding Francis House. And if you'd like to make them a donation, get in contact. Now next up, we're off to the John Alker Hall in Urmston. Every single year, Wayne Devlin has his Croon into Christmas show and he donates all the money to a local charity. So we went along to find out who's going to benefit this year. Just like it's grand to see The wind feels blue too When the blackbird starts to sing yeah. We're here at the John Alker in Flixton and it's here for crooning to Christmas. Of course, this is an annual Christmas party for you, Wayne. It is. Each year, me and my wife, Al, we do um, our own charity shows for various charities in Manchester and around local Trafford area. Um, this time we're supporting Once Upon a Smile. Yeah, and of course, that's a very special charity to people here around the Trafford area, indeed in Manchester. Yeah, it's um, a bereavement charity that um, mainly deal with children. Um, so after what happened in Manchester with the bombing, it's uh, quite an apt charity. Yeah, and of course, uh, I know that you donated some of the takings from one of your songs to the Yimmy and Arena disaster. Yeah, my second single um, was given to me by um, Charlie Lansborough. It's What Colour Is The Wind? Um, when he gave me that song, it's a beautiful song. I'll be singing it later. Um, we donated the, all the royalties from that to the victims' families. Um, so that was quite nice. But this charity ties in perfectly. After six months or so um, after these events, this charity kicks in and really supports families when all the other services back off a bit. Uh, so they are, it's very much needed funding, so it's, uh, it's nice to raise up money for uh, a worthwhile cause. Mayor, it's great to see you here at the John Alcohol supporting Wayne Devlin's charity. It's wonderful to be here. It's great that he uh, saw fit to invite us this evening. Yeah, and of course, we're, we're all in for a good night because I know we've been here about a couple of years ago and there was great support and great support for this charity. So we're all looking forward to it. Yes, I mean, Wayne's a very, very popular person, particularly in this part of the world. Everybody knows and loves Wayne and the sort of music that he does is absolutely uh, fantastic. Now, of course, you're heavily involved in charity work as well, and you've done quite a bit down the years. Tell me a little bit about that. Yes, I've done quite a bit of charity work. Uh, our main charities this year, because the Mayor and Mayoress always have a charity uh, which we support, uh, but we've chosen three this year. We've got uh, Alder Hay Children's Hospital, and we've got the Brain Tumour Research, and we've got the Alex Hume Foundation, which is based locally here in Sale in Trafford. Yeah, and of course each of the charities are wonderful charities, but of course the Alder Hay does wonderful work for children that's really ill. Yes, that's very close to our heart. Our, uh, we're blessed with having four grandchildren, but uh, the youngest was born uh, be three years uh, coming up on Christmas Eve, and on Christmas Day he was having five hours of open heart surgery. 
and that was at Alder Hay. And I'm pleased to say that he's absolutely fine. But uh, we always said if we ever got the opportunity of raising money, uh, then Alder Hay would want to be one of our charities. Now, when you first become mayor, you created a little bit of history in the family, didn't you? Yes, I'm the first uh, second generation mayor here in Trafford. My father was mayor in 1989-90 uh, and my wife was uh, his mayoress as well. So, uh, so she's the expert in the field. This is her second time round, uh, so I just do as I'm told. Now, Lady Mayoress, what's it like to be working for two different mayors? Well, very enjoyable each time. It's, it's different times now. Um, obviously, times change and things move on. But the main thing is that we meet such a lot of wonderful people and fantastic organisations. People that are volunteering, working in the communities, and making such a difference to everybody's life here in Trafford. Well, absolutely. There's so much great work being done, not just in Trafford, but of course in Trafford, but all over Manchester yes. and the country. Yeah. And I'm sure every person that is, is lucky enough to have the privilege to be in the position that we're in would say the same because I'm sure it happens everywhere. And so much of it is almost on your own doorstep, but you didn't know about it because these people just work away, they volunteer, they make a real difference. And until you're privileged to be in the position that we're in and you go and visit them and support them, you don't always know about it. And, and it's just so wonderful to see. Wayne and his wife Val and all the family put so much effort into fundraising for good causes every Christmas and we wish them the very best of luck with this one. Now we're off for a very quick break. See you soon. Welcome back to the Irish in the UK. Now, if you've got a story to tell us, or if you'd like us to promote your business, contact me. The details are on the screen now. Now, recently, some of the Irish community from the Warrington Irish Club arranged a big fundraising event for the Alder Hay Children's Hospital in Liverpool. And we went along to see how it all went. <laughs> Natalie, can you tell me how did you first get involved with Alder Hay Children's Hospital? I first got involved with Alder Hay Children's Hospital when Caitlin was just a couple of hours old. She was transferred there as an emergency due to having um, a variety of congenital heart defects, what, what we call half a heart. That must be a very traumatic time for you as a, as a young mum. I was a very young mum at the time, um, made me grow up very fast. Caitlin was she, was, she was so strong, the doctors, the nurses, I, I can't explain how amazing they actually are. Now, of course, Caitlin's had numerous operations down the years. She has had four open heart surgeries. She's also had some surgery on her um, lower leg. There is also a possibility we will find out just before Christmas if she requires more surgery. We're just waiting on that at the moment. And of course they do a wonderful job, not just for the children, but for the mums and dads that's got to stay there and visit as well. I believe the new, the new build at the moment, the, the new hospital, actually has um, a room there for parents so they can stay with the children. But across the road as well is also apartments when parents need a break, that little break that they might need. Now, Caitlin, of course, I've come across you before and we've met a few times, but how are you doing these days? Um, I'm doing fine, yeah. And you're, you're back at school, aren't you? Uh, yeah, I'm back at school now. I'm in year eight, actually. And are you enjoying seeing all your friends and being back amongst them all again? Yeah, I kind of miss them because I've like, come back from holiday only a few weeks ago. Yeah. And we know that you were in Ireland at County Clare earlier on in the summertime. Did you have a good time? Yeah, even though the weather wasn't that good, it was still really fun. So have you got many friends in Ireland? Uh, yeah, I have a few and then I also have my family as well over there. 
Are you looking forward to Christmas coming and Father Christmas visiting? Yeah, I am. Have you written to him yet? No. <laughs> no. Well, you better hurry on. Yeah, I better. <laughs> Audrey, of course you organised a charity walk as well in Ireland. Tell me, where did that start? We started in Letterkenny in County Donegal. Um, we started at the cathedral and there was, all, there was great, a great crowd turned out that morning to watch us off, all the locals and the family. It was a beautiful morning, the sun was shining, a great crowd and we headed off for a good day's walking. And of course your enthusiasm was very high at that stage starting off, but how did the day go for you and how did the rest of the walk go for you through the counties? Oh, it went great, so it did, Martin. We, we, um, we managed it well, so we did. We had adults and children walking, and we split up, and we all did a bit, and it was great, so it was. We, we managed it great. And did many people join you in the walk from, you know, from the counties and from the towns as you went through? We did. I have a lot of family that lives in Remelton and Letterkenny, so they all walked the first day with us. Um, we'd, we didn't have as many the second and third day, but the first day we had a big crowd, so we had. And Carol, of course, you walked every step of the way with them, but you had a great old time around Galway. Yes, we did, Martin. We walked from Galway to Tume down the N17, and that was a fair trek on itself. Chris did lie about the miles, but we did clock the miles and we all met up in the bridge bar in Tune. And of course you got great hospitality there. We did, Davy there in the bar, he put all the food on and it was amazing. We couldn't have asked for anything better by the time we arrived. Yeah. And then you headed off and of course you, had, you went down that coast road, heading off down towards County Clare. Yes we did, we started off in Kinvara and then we walked to Ballyvaughan and then the boys went from uh, Ballyvaughan to Fenor and then we all ended up in Liscano and they arranged a walk round from the cliffs, the visitor centre, and that was about six or seven miles back down and it was organised so well. And then we all ended up back in Liscano village um, in McHugh's pub to finish the walk off. Now, look, you must have taken great satisfaction. You've raised a lot of money on this walk for the Alder Hay Children's Hospital. It's a great achievement. Oh, in itself it is. The walkers was amazing. And all our sponsors, you know, we kept walking thinking the sponsors are doing this for us and what right have we to give up? So we kept walking and walking and walking and we managed it all. You got it. Wayne, now you put in a lot of effort with your team as well to raise money for the Alder Hay. Tell me about it. OK, there was uh, 20 of us this year. Uh, we uh, walked up Snowden, uh, did the Lemberis Path. Um, some of us was the first time. Uh, I'd done it myself before. Um, my sister Joanne uh, was her first time. Took us four hours up, uh, two hours down. Uh, the sun came out, great weather on the day. Uh, as we got right down to the bottom, it started to rain. Um, some fun along the way, we had a great laugh. Uh, there was a few falls. Um, my sister lost a couple of uh, toenails <laughs> as a result. So yeah, it was really enjoyable, but for a great cause, so it was good. How much training did you do, Joanne, before you climbed this uh, Mount Snowden? Um, not much, really. Thought I was going to do a lot more, but I thought it'd be a lot easier than what it was. So I nearly packed in the first 10 minutes and nearly gave it up. It was horrible, but then after that, really got into it and I loved it. What, was it, it what was it like when you actually got to the top? Amazing. There was a pub at the top, so, yeah, it was, it was brilliant. Everyone was in a really good mood at the top, and, yeah, it was, it was really good. I enjoyed it. And, Wayne, there was quite a group of you, wasn't there, that uh, went that day to climb Snowdon? Yeah, 20, like I say. Um... Some fitter than others, like I said, done it before, so all doing it at, di at different paces. Um, there's also a railway track, if you don't know, so some got the train back down uh, to try and beat us home. <laughs> no, no, no. So, like, it, it was a great sense of achievement, not only for the, for the great charity, uh, but just personally for, for some people. Um, and like uh, Joanne said, uh, I'd done it, I think it was 10 years ago, and there was, like, a little shed at the top for a pint. This time it's a lot better. It's like a service station, nice couple of cold uh, uh, snowed Odin beers. It was very, very good, really enjoyable. James, of course, you started all this fundraising off very early in the year. 
Yes, we started off with the boxing in March, Martin, and we had a great day. Now tell me a little bit about the boxing because I know that you've held this event a few times. Yes, it's the second time we've, we've done it now and we have a, a team comes over from Dublin, called a boxing team called Seat Saviours and we have the lads from Warrington, it's uh, Warrington ABC and Phoenix ABC. And of course uh, the money raised that day goes towards all this funds for Alder Hay. It all goes to Alder Hay and it, it's, we have a great day and it's, it's for a great cause. Great stuff. Now, John, you done your bit as well for Alder Hay this year, didn't you? Yes, I did. I put a, a concert on, the same person who's on tonight, uh, in May, 17th of May, uh, and it's a Motown and Soul night. It's a great community spirit, this, that so many of you are involved in fundraising for the Alder Hay. Yes, the reason I got in touch with Alder Hay was my granddaughter has uh, got Ida Creflis, um, brittle bones and sleep apnea. So I thought what a good cause that would be to join Chris and James. Now Chris, of course, tonight you're going to present a cheque to Alder here for £12,000. A wonderful achievement. It's fantastic, you know, the people that supported us, like Sir John, you know, other people's put dues on. It's fantastic what they've done, you know, for us. It's great community spirit, yeah. Yeah, and of course you've, you've arranged several things all during the year to get to this £12,000. So, so many people have been involved. Yeah, there's been like, we had the race nights, we've had a Snowden walk and the Atlantic Way walk. And you know, and John's doing some small do's as well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a gentleman here, he's on holiday and he would have been here today and he's been a, an absolute fantastic help to us all. And it's Steve Charlton and he does the dominoes for us and we always have that in March as well. And I just thought I'd like to thank him and all the sponsors and everybody else. Thank you very much. Now you stay quiet for just a few minutes. Well, there you are. A very big well done to everybody who took part in the fundraising event for the Alder Hay Children's Hospital. And thank you to everybody who supported them as well. Now, Henry McGlade is back next Thursday evening at 7 o'clock with the Irish at home and abroad, and I'm here at half past seven with the Irish in the UK. Until then, take care of yourselves and thank you for watching. And here's a little bit more from Wayne Devlin. Now, you were fantastic. Thank you, you're a good man. I'll treat you later. I know each colour, each shade, each slice. I've seen them all. With my daddy's eyes I know that grass is green, daddy I felt it with my toe And snow is pure as white, daddy I felt it touch my nose